Hi right, hey everyone, welcome back to Eleven Lessons Online. Okay, we're back with microeconomics. I know it's been a while. The last part we left off over on costs and revenue. Okay, so we're gonna be moving back into market structure. Uh moving on with market structure, getting a little into the tougher side of things. Okay, we're gonna be looking at this part on perfect competition. Okay, this is the part of the syllabus whereby a lot of you guys do not like, okay, because there's PC firms, there's MC firms, there's oligopolies, there's monopolies, okay, and I know there's a lot of things to remember for them, okay, but hopefully through my videos, okay, you'll be able to better understand, okay, what exactly a market structure is, and um, how on earth do they work, how they function, and what you need to be looking out for, okay, so straight up, actually, market structure is very, very simple, there's only certain things that yeah, I, I want you to actually go and um, focus on, okay, these are the things that will help you to understand better what on earth market structure is all about about okay so i'll be covering market structure in the form of this order um for all four of them okay so it will be based on characteristics let me get a yellow okay it'll be based on characteristics followed by behavior followed by their performance okay across the board all three of them all, all four of all four market structures they okay, follow this same order um they all have certain characteristics they all have different behaviors and they all perform differently as well Okay, so the characteristics, I'm going to be talking about the number of firms, the size of firms, the type of goods and services, the presence of BTE, your barriers to entry, very, very important concept, as well as the level of knowledge. Is there imperfect knowledge? Is there full perfect knowledge? What kind of knowledge is there available? Okay, behavior, I'm going to be looking at the objectives. Okay, do they want to profit maximize or not? Okay, so what type of profits then do they earn? So decisions to achieve objectives, including cost and revenue. Okay, do they want to minimize costs? Do they not care about costs? How do they want to maximize revenue? Okay, what kind of profits do they earn? Um, do they rely on competitors' actions? Okay, you notice this part a lot in oligopolies. Um, what are the attached business risks and how uncertain are the conditions in the market supposed to be like? Okay, and then performance, we're going to look at the main two goals of microeconomics. You should already know this by now. It is efficiency and equity. Okay, microeconomics, governments always aim to achieve economic efficiency, which means yeah, this includes allocative efficiency, productive efficiency, and dynamic efficiency, as well as to achieve equity for all um, stakeholders. Okay, so you're going to be looking at these three, okay, whether they actually fulfill them. If they don't, how is the government going to step in? All right, let's jump in into PC firms, okay? Characteristics is actually very, very simple, okay? You just need to understand and, and, and see the difference between all three, all four market structures in terms of their characteristics. So I won't, I won't labor on it too much. Um, but basically, for a PC firm, certain characteristics it has, okay, it has got freedom of barriers to entry. Okay, what does it mean by freedom of barriers to entry? It means that any firm can come in, any firm can go out any time they want. Here, okay, the cost to actually enter the industry is very, very low. So this is a good thing and also a bad thing, okay? Because you realize that um, once you enter, there's a lot of competition. Everyone does the same thing. But at the same time, you don't really lose anything by entering the market, okay? Okay, there's a large number of buyers and sellers. Um, and there's free mobility of factors of production. Okay, so PC firms are essentially the most ideal. In fact, it doesn't even exist in the real world, okay? The reason why is because it's too perfect, right? It's perfect competition. Okay, so there's a large number of buyers and sellers and there's free mobility of fact, uh, factors of production. What else? Okay, there's also perfect knowledge of the market by producers, producers and consumers. Okay, so you realize in the real world, it never happens. Imperfect knowledge will always prevail. Okay, and then they all sell the same product, so homogeneous or identical products, hence resulting in a perfectly priced elastic demand curve. And you also realize that all firms are price takers. Okay, so because no firm can actually change an output um, by changing the price of their products, okay, because it's um, firstly there is no barriers to entry, which means that everyone can come in and sell the same thing for the same price, um, and, and because there's such a large number of sellers and buyers, okay, every firm just ends up taking the same price. So that's why it's a perfect scenario, okay. Everyone is achieving. Okay, I'll go through the performance data, okay, but essentially everyone does the same thing in this market. Okay, so behavior of PC firms, assuming that all firms aim to maximize profit whereby MR equals to MC, this is actually how your your, your curve will look like. Okay, it's, I hope it's not too intimidating. Okay, essentially how, how you're going to look at this is first, you want to draw out the PC curve. Okay, so the firm in a PC will always look something like this. This is a pencil, is it? 
Okay, so you have got your MC curve. Okay, MC curve is always going to look like this. Okay, this one is, is no doubt. Okay, then you have got your average cost. So these three and then your demand. Okay, your demand AR equals to MR. I'll go through exactly how these curves work in another video. Um, for now, just, just, just try and understand first. Okay, MC curve. Okay, the reason why it curves upwards like that is because of your law of diminishing marginal returns. So at a, after a certain point, okay, your, your returns will not be as high. Um, your AC curve is basically the curve that determines the profits. Okay, where AC intersects AR determines the type of profits that a firm earns. Okay, so all three of them intersect at this one price P1 over here. Demand is always price elastic, perfectly price elastic okay, because there are a lot of firms in the market. Every firm takes this price. So in order to determine what this price is, you then need to draw out your demand and your supply curve for the industry. Okay, so when you draw out this demand and supply curve, you will find that you will get this price P1, which is why if you draw it back over to this side over here, you get this price over here. All firms are price takers. That's why it, it, it is found at this price over here. So something like this, okay, you, you, in an exam, you don't really have to draw this curve, okay, because usually PC firms, um, it's, it's just simply explaining the, the, the bare minimum. So I'll go through more on, on the more complex curves for oligopolies and monopolies later on instead. This one, just understand that this is roughly how you get it, okay, the, the industry price is determined, is determined by the demand and supply of the entire market. So demand and supply, okay, after that, they, that determines the price of, of what, um, all the sellers are going to take and then this price when intersecting with your MC um, would mean that the firm is at the profit maximizing level okay and then after that your AC curve is just there to determine what type of profits they earn which in this case is normal profits since AC equals to AR as well okay alright so from this curve okay I'm gonna just oh, I basically just explain everything okay I'll just explain it again one more time so from this curve, from the demand and supply graph, K P1 and QE are ob obtained. Um, so since PC firms are price takers, the firms take the price of P1, okay, and um, this is due to their inability to set price, hence resulting in your demand equals to your marginal revenue. Okay, so the only decision a firm can make um, in a PC market is how much to produce. So in this case, it will be the profit maximization level at MC equals to MR. So traditional objective of them want to maximize profits, right? We've gone through this in the previous video. Okay, so hence this is the reason why they all operate um, at this point of the MC equals to MR curve as well. Okay, so take note, average revenue is often called the demand curve, okay, due to its representation of the product's demand in the market. Okay, so it is the average revenue, total revenue divided by total quantity. Okay, so the price determines the demand for a market, hence, uh, I mean for a product, hence your price equals to AR equals to AD. Okay, try and get that again, okay? So like, um, I'm going to repeat again. Okay, so the average revenue is often called demand, okay, because it represents how much demand there is in the market, right? So when firms, I mean, when when when, when consumers want to buy certain things, okay, they, there's this thing called a signaling effect. Okay, I've already gone through this before actually in my, in my um, demand supply part of uh, the videos, okay, but yes, likewise, okay, there is going to be this thing called the signaling effect. And so it's signaled through price, which is why price to begin with price equals to demand right so after this okay, because average revenue is essentially the total revenue which is derived by price times quantity um, over the quantity okay average revenue right now here equals to total revenue over the total quantity and this is equals to the price times quantity over quantity this would mean that AR equals to your price okay so for those of you guys who have never understood this this is basically how it works, which is why AR equals to demand, which is signaled by price. And that is why this formula exists. Okay, so in the case of PC firms, your marginal revenue equals to demand as well. Hence, your marginal revenue equals to demand equals to uh, your average revenue. So if you need to play that again, play it again. It's very simple mathematics. Average revenue equals to price. Price is the same as demand. They all equivalent to each other. That's all. Okay, so then now we look at the profits. Okay, so MC equals to MR always determines the profit maximizing price and output. So it's only which quantity they, sh they are able to profit maximize at. Whereas your average cost equals to average revenue will determine the, the type of profit. So is it subnormal, is it normal, or is it supernormal? 
Okay, in this case, firms in the market over here, PC firms, okay, they only make normal profits in the long run. Okay, the reason being is because of your barriers to entry. Okay, so any potential super normal profits will be eroded straight away by the entry of new firms. And if firms were making subnormal profits in the short run, they could easily just leave. Okay, because of the of the absence of barriers to entry, right, when firms actually come into this market and they realize, oh crap, I'm making a loss, I need to get out of here. It doesn't really cost them much to leave. They can just leave at a very, very low cost. Okay, however, um, in the long run, if a firm chooses to stay and let's say they see that, oh, maybe I can make super normal profits, okay, it will all get eroded because other potential entrants, okay, other new firms will look at it and be like, wow, that super normal profits are very attractive. I'm going to jump into this market as well. Hence, eroding all types of profits in that market for the original um, firms which are earning super normal profits in the short run. Okay, which is why you will find that in the long run, AC will always equals to AR at this point over here. Okay, that means that the firm always is going to be earning normal profits. Okay, so then the behavior of PC firms. Okay, there's this thing called the shutdown condition that doesn't exist in other markets. Okay, so a firm will continue to operate as long as it can cover the average variable costs. I've already gone through costs in the previous video. Okay, link in the top right corner of the screen. Okay, go, go check it out first. Go and understand what your AVC and AFC is all about. Okay, your average fixed cost is not factored in. Okay, as it is still incurred whether a firm continues or shuts down. So this is a fixed cost. Fixed costs always stay with the firm no matter how badly it's doing or how great it is doing. So when your price is less than your average variable cost, which is things like your factors of production, the firm will be able to minimize losses by shutting down. So this is called the shutdown condition. Okay, this is because when price equals to average revenue, your average revenue will be less than your average variable cost, which makes sense, right? Just now we came to the conclusion that P equals to AR. So now, since P is less than AVC, this would mean that your AR will be less than AVC. So when your average revenue is less than your average cost, it obviously means that you're not doing well, right? It means that you're making sub-normal profits in the short run. Hence, this would mean that you would want to shut down. Okay, so um, I've already gone through ARAC before in the previous video, I believe. Okay, but just to refresh you. Oh, shoot. Okay, let me, let me write it with this pen instead. Okay, when AR equals to AC, this is normal profits. When AR is more than AC, this is super normal profits. And when AR is less than AC, this is subnormal profits. Okay, so just remember this part. Okay, which is why over here they're earning subnormal profits because your AR is less than AVC. Okay, so the performance of PC firms, okay, I'm going to go through this rather quickly because it's um it's, it's very simple actually. Okay, so performance of PC firms wise, um, they are definitely very productive, efficient. Um, because why? Okay, they operate at the optimal capacity and there's no wastage of resources, right? There's perfect knowledge to begin with. So that's why there's obviously not going to be wastage of resources. And they know exactly where to produce at the profit maximizing output, which will be able to help them achieve the lowest cost possible. That is what productive efficiency is about. So they operate at the minimum efficient scale. Okay, I'll go through this in another video, uh, a bit more on this concept of um, MES. Okay, on the other hand, for allocated efficiency, it occurs where P equals to MC, this output level, because the cost matches the consumer's va va uh, valuation of an additional unit of good. So just now you have seen, right, that your price equals to demand equals to AR equals to MR, right? So in this case, P is definitely at MC. Okay, that's why a PC firm is also allocated efficient. Okay, go back and see the graph. Then you realize that P equals to MC as well at that specific quantity. Okay. So that will lead to a more equitable distribution of income as competition drives prices down to the lower, lowest average cost. So this part will also tie into your um, productive efficiency as well. So a firm, it is a PC firm is productive efficient and is also allocative efficient. So it's good for the market. That's why it's perfect. Okay. So all in all, for this chapter, it's actually quite straightforward. Okay, all, all we need you to do is to be able to explain and discuss the characteristics, behavior, and performance of PC firms. So like I've gone through it, this, will be, this exam requirement will be the same for all four market structures, okay? And after that, you just need to understand the differences between a PC firm and other type of market structures, okay? Especially your MC firms, okay? Because MC firms are quite similar, okay? Except that MC firms is real life, okay? In real life, um, things like hawker stores, okay? Things like um, food, uh, food courts, okay? Those are actual MC firms, okay? PC firms don't exist in the real world but they're actually called MC firms and MC firms have a different set of rules that follows them um, which I'll go through in the next video. Okay, so for now, PC firms, go and understand what the characteristics are, the behavior and the performance and then you're good to go. 
Okay, so if you did enjoy this video, um, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you can. Um, as well as to subscribe to the channel, it really does help me out a lot. Um, also, if you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section below. Uh, regarding PC firms or any other market structures, um, I will release the next few soon. Okay, it will take a bit of time because I need to compile the slides and everything. Um, so if not, that's actually all I have for you guys. Till then, have a good one. Bye bye.